Africa. A very warm welcome to you, Alvin. I would like to just jump right into it and start off with some of the comments that have come out that what is happening right now, particularly in the EAC, not only with Kenya, but that this, these tax incentives and what they're doing is promoting harmful tax competition in the region. Why would that be? Thank you very much. I mean, the study we uh, just launched uh, found out that uh, the countries of uh, the East Africa, uh, the countries under study were Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, and Rwanda, are uh, engaged in what we see we can term as a race to the bottom by offering wide range of, of, of uh, tax incentives aimed at uh, attracting foreign direct investments. From the study, what the study found out is that <coughs> the four countries are losing up to a total of 2.8 billion annually as a result of, uh, of these tax incentives. This is money that the, these governments are losing as a result of, of offering this wide range of tax incentives. So when you talk about it being harmful tax competition in the region, what do you mean by that? What we mean by that is that countries are <clears throat> in their efforts to attract uh, foreign direct investments are engaged in a competition where they are competing against each other to attract foreign direct investment. So you find that, for instance, uh, in the flower sector in Kenya, there is a huge uh, competition existing between uh, Kenya, Tanzania, and Ethiopia particularly, aimed at attracting investment to the, to the flower sector. And to do these, uh, countries are resulting to offering um, uh, significant tax incentives under the so-called uh, economic uh, processing zones. You find that uh, Kenya is offering uh, companies a 10-year tax holiday uh, where companies are, are, are operating for 10 years without paying a, a single penny to the, to the fiscals. And one of the things so that, that, you, that, that one of the things that has been said yeah, though please, is please. that these countries would probably be saying, well, the reason that we're doing this is for us to attract that investment, but you're saying there's lots of research that has been done and including organizations like the IMF, organizations like the World Bank that have given up research and said that it's actually not necessary to have the tax incentives at the level that these countries are having them at. So just speak to us about, about how you intend to or what you would like to see happen in this space if they are saying that you don't need to have this, this kind of wall, like you would say, the race to the bottom. Exactly. Indeed, uh, leading institutions, as you say, including the IMF, uh, the Africa Development Bank recently in their, in their latest report of 20, 2011, clearly pointed out that the, the, the huge tax incentives that are being offered by, to, to, to attract foreign direct investment are not effective. A study that was conducted by the IMF, uh, a survey asking companies what kind of factors um, do they uh, use to, 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 to decide on where they're investing, found out that only 1% of these companies see tax incentives as a reason to, to decide on their investment destination. Majority of companies put more emphasis on issues around infrastructure, around access to, to, to uh, power, um, the legal framework that exists, and uh, human resource. These are factors that are more important than the, the tax incentives that are being offered by, by the countries. That so one started. of the things that has been said is the public can get involved in that, and that would, that would help change what is happening right now. What can the public do? Yeah, what we are calling for is uh, an inst institutionalization of, uh, of tax expenditure policies as part of the budget uh, uh, making process, whereby governments will be required to, as part of the budget making process, put in place um, indications or in terms of what kind of tax incentives they are offering, what is the cost of these tax incentives, who are the beneficiaries of these tax incentives, and what are, these, what are the countries benefiting in the long term. We are not against tax incentives per se, but what we are saying that the majority of the tax incentives that are being offered are, no, are not effective in, in, in attracting foreign direct investment, but they are complicating the tax system and also creating an avenue for rent seeking and, and corruption because of the kind of discretionary powers that are, are, are given to, among others, the ministers to provide, to give these tax incentives, and that's opening doors for uh, politically connected companies to enjoy tax incentives uh, uh, in to the disadvantage of, of, of other companies. Alvin, what I'd like to ask you is, are you having discussions with the powers that be right now, the policy makers, the people that are putting these policies in place? Are you having any kind of discussion with them so far? Indeed, we are. And uh, actually, in the launch that we had today, we had uh, the, the Kenya Revenue Authority, we had uh, the private sector, uh, 
Uh, we had uh, people from um, civil society organizations. The IMF was, was on the table. And we all seem to concur that indeed uh, the tax incentive systems are not working for Africa. They are not working for Kenya. And they need to be removed. But uh, I think that the Ministry of Finance in Kenya, the, the new constitution does, does uh, demand that uh, tax expenditure policies are put in place. And the government of Kenya has indeed signal, uh, signaled uh, readiness to, to, to put measures in place to address this. So we are, we are monitoring the situation and holding discussions with the policymakers from both uh, the revenue authorities and the Ministry of Finance. And I suppose what does matter okay. at the end of the day for the people in these countries is, is what has been said is 2.8 billion US dollars lost each year, like you say, due to these tax incentives in the EAC. And meanwhile, governments are struggling to deliver on public services. So what would you like to see happen in that space? Because as you're saying, you know, all this money that is being lost and yet these governments are barely managing to give their people in their countries the services that they need. Yeah, just, just to give you an example, uh, Kenya gives annually up to over 100 uh, billion uh, Kenya shillings annually as tax incentives. And this is almost double what the government spends on, on health, on, on the health sector. Similar thing if you look at the case of, of, of Uganda, it is twice the budget of, of Uganda in the education. So while on one side, governments are complaining and, and saying we don't have money to invest uh, in, in, uh, in the, in the provision of essential, of essential services, while governments are, are, are begging more for, for, for resources, for external resources in form of ODA, they are at the same, si at, at the same side, on the other side, giving you these huge tax incentives, and which are eroding the tax bases and creating a, a com complicating the world tax system, sort of making the tax system unable to generate the resources that are necessary to finance development. Thank you so much for joining us, Alvin.